you want to see how I uh, overhauled this uh, router table stand here? I uh, added the drawer, uh, closed it all in, uh, redid the finish. Uh, stand by, because that's what we're going to do today. Good morning and uh, welcome to another Memphis Monday. If you remember a couple of weeks ago, uh, we were looking at the uh, router table and found a bunch of tools laying around on it and said we didn't like that because, you know, just uh, tools drift. And uh, let's take a round turn on that and see if we can fix it today. Here's a problem. Here's my router table. And I built, down to the bottom, I built the little uh, shelf down there to hold all my tools and stuff and seemed really logical at the time, except human nature always kicks in and I always use the ledge right there because reaching up under that thing, fishing through uh, wood chips and stuff to find what I need just isn't practical. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to try to put a drawer in, a big drawer, in that open space there. Let's uh, take this thing apart and I think we'll do a better job if we take it apart and put it up on the workbench. I'm not going to use this bottom shelf anymore so uh, I'm going to uh, just take it out of there. It's kind of interesting the way I built it. I built it out of pine boards, neatly trimmed around these corners. Kind of a shame, but I don't need it. Don't want it. This is one of the reasons I'm getting rid of this shelf. Look how it collects all this sawdust. See that? Well, what that does, I mean, I've been using this little T-wrench or this little Allen wrench to adjust the height of my blade because my real T-wrench, this one, uh, was buried in the sawdust and I couldn't find it. Well, I'm, I'm going to take, uh, take the top off this thing and make it easier to handle. Uh, but I put a builder's mark on this thing. It looks like I was off by a couple of years uh, when I built it. I built it on December 31st, 2009. Built to last at least 100 years. These, uh, these legs are at a compound angle. Uh, this angle here slopes in at seven and a half degrees. Now luckily I made all my angles uh, consistent all the way around. So this is the sides of the box right here and I put these seven and a half degree angles on there. Now let's put, uh, let's put the top on. Let's set this bottom in here, bottom of the box. Right width. That well, looks like it's going to work. Well, I was going to <coughs> build this box uh, outside the bench and then try to slide it in there. But everything is cut at a, an angle. You know, these, these boards, these horizontal boards are cut at a 7 degree angle. These are cut at a 7 degree angle. And everything has got to, at the end of the day, fit. Uh, where these sides are plumb and parallel and so I think the best way to make that happen is to assemble this box right inside the uh, frame here. The final step is to uh, put this this top piece in. It looks a little funky now. It's got a little smile because the plywood's warped. This Okay, our box is installed. This is uh, going to be the size of our drawers right here. And so I've cut this piece of remnant here. I always do this just to make sure my, make sure the, the 
these vertical pieces right here are all plumb and parallel. So this will ensure me that uh, I've got a good place to put my drawers. Well, we, as we talked about, the drawer front or the, the side of the uh, case here is angled at about seven degrees. So let's go look at the drawer, how we're gonna have to make the drawer. Now I've never seen this done before, so we may be inventing something new, but this sideboard here is cut at seven degrees. And then each one of these, this front board here on the drawer, it's cut at seven degrees too. So let's stick this thing together. This is one of those times when you don't use a jig because uh, you don't use a jig because you're only making one. I got the drawer slide sort of stuck in there just to make sure to get the spacing right. Um, but that's how it's going to sit in there. See how it sits at a seven degree angle. Never seen a drawer like that before. Okay, let's put the bottom on. Glue this bottom on here. Nail it down. It's going to be the strongest thing you ever saw. Okay, let's give it a whirl. Well, they're not, uh, they're not high dollar door slides, but it's all I had. Okay, so now I gotta think about a. <clears throat> when I built front. this thing uh, six years ago, I must have been going through an industrial period or something because I put the thing together with uh, about a hundred uh, carriage bolts. I must have liked it then, but I don't like it now, and I'm going to take out those uh, carriage bolts and replace uh, and fill the holes with dowels. I just countered them. <clears throat> I just countered them. There are 40, 40 bolts holding this uh, around the top here. Isn't that funny? What I'm going to try to do here is just uh, put these dowels in these holes. And then I'll sand them off. Not only did I have uh, carriage bolts in this thing, but I also had uh, lag bolts, four of them, in each uh, front here. <laughs> Maybe I had put those 48 lag bolts in it, or 48 uh, carriage bolts in it because it was kind of plain. But let's put the sides and uh, sides and back on it and see if that dresses it up any. This is what I came up with for a door. I a door thing for the drawer here. Uh, it leans back seven degrees. Uh, this is poplar. I went with poplar on this trim something really plain and narrow. Uh, this is oak plywood, 3 inch thick. And this uh, center piece right here is, um, is oak. And of course, this is just old uh, pine. Um, I continue, I'll continue this, uh, this idea here on the sides and also on the back but I'm, I won't be putting the center strip in. Um, so it'll be totally covered in. 
now finally we can get around to putting the sides on here. I'm going to continue the design of the uh, we have on the drawer front on these pieces here. These will be at the same angle as the legs and then I'll put uh, the poplar trim around here. And I'll hold the trim on with uh, just a couple of staples. attach these side panels using 16 16 gauge brads Then I'll uh, come in, come in behind and add some uh, body, some uh, wood filler. I got all the uh, panels in. Got a little sanding to do, but. all closed in now so I won't be getting sawdust and wood shavings and everything else inside the cabinet. Okay let's let that glue dry and let's take a, a round turn on that uh, tabletop over here. I'm going to stain the piece with a color called Ipswich Pine. Uh, we had pretty good success with this uh, on the camping tables with the folding legs. And I think it will be uh, kind of true to the uh, piece because this thing is essentially made out of pine. So I think we're using the right stain. Let's let the uh, stain dry and uh, we'll do some assembly. I think I'll put some polyurethane on this thing while it's up on the bench. It's uh, always easier. Here's my drying system. This is a quick, quick drying polyurethane anyway, but I got a fan blowing on it on in that direction, blows across it, and then blows it out there. So getting real good ventilation. Probably half an hour or so I'll be able to we'll be able to do some final assembly. I'm holding the uh, holding the top on using these little angle braces. Now drum roll time.
Well, I guess that'll do it for another uh, Memphis Monday. Wait a minute. Let me get my T-wrench. Oh, here it is. Right here. Right in my new drawer. That goes right up there. So I adjust the uh, blade. Well, anyway, I'm pretty, uh, pretty excited. Uh, you know, I think we, uh, I got to go down memory lane because, uh, you know, I built this thing uh, six years ago. I don't, don't remember building it. Um, and we found that, uh, you know, builder's mark under there. It said uh, uh, 100 years, uh, guaranteed for 100 years or something of those effects. And then we discovered why. Uh, we have uh, some uh, spline joinery on the top. The thing was held together with 48 uh, carriage bolts and all kinds of silly stuff. But anyway, I think uh, it's much more practical now. We have a drawer angled seven degrees. Uh, dust and sawdust can't get in here anymore, so I'm, I'm uh, pretty pleased. This might look a little bit... Uh, to 1950s for me, but uh, we did best we could. Well, anyway, so I think we got our money's worth today, and it's uh, great having you along. And tweet and favorite and like and comment, but most of all, make sure you're back here next week for another exciting Memphis Monday. Thanks for watching.